I pity you welcome, or welcome back. For a second time this week, if I don't end up somehow not finishing this video in time. Yeah, that line in my script did not age well. Today I'm turning the bisexual pride flag into a Frankensteinian monster, after I did it with the intersex pride flag in the last video. <laughs> now pride month is unfortunately already over and happy pride month afterwards to anyone who is still listening to this. You know, I wanted to spread out these three videos for the last three weeks of pride month and you know, I also wanted to be a paleontologist when I was a kid and I wanted to live off of Fiverr commissions back in 2021. We all wanted all sorts of strange things through our lives, am I right? Anyways, here's the second video of this project and this character I created is called Sunshine Honeybee. More about the name later. They belong in a series of non-binary monster characters, a series that contains two characters so far, normally Sparkleface the Ghoul and Bubbles Ikti, the other Frankensteinian monster slash merfolk character hybrid and here's the next one. I started by sketching out a few different designs then I ended up combining three of them into one piece. There was the general pose of the face for the first one then the cut through the ear and the short hair piece on the side and then the cut in the middle of the face from the third picture. At this point I still didn't know what this character is gonna be about or what bright flag I'm going to use but then the cut in the middle gave me the final idea for the design. I talked about my goal with this series in the previous video. In a nutshell it's about the bittersweet struggles of being a queer person and about one's relationship with their own body. The story of Sunshine being one about internalized hatred towards their sexuality, gender identity, identity and physical body in the form of dysmorphia and depression. All of our favorite traits that totally none of us refreshed for over two decades. <laughs> definitely not me. Sunshine is definitely not a self-insert character because I never had depression. Now for these three monsters I decided to keep the colors of the bright flex subtle. All of the videos I saw about people doing things like this feature really saturated colors or just straight up the original colors of the different bright flex and I went for muted one and not even for the exact hues. Well looking back at it I just literally swapped the royal blue of the bisexual pride flag into this purple while I was trying out what colors would work together. Upon asking someone they actually correctly guessed that it was the bisexual pride flag and I took that as a sign of it being recognizable enough because these colors looked the best and I didn't want to change it halfway through. Obviously two really colorful bodies were combined and then the bruise gives the third color which is the stripe in the middle of the flag. Also a tiny shout out to the person who correctly guessed that this was the bisexual pride flag. This person also involuntarily inspired the hair in the middle of the face of the character that's a uh, strange a uh, little piece of information but I just wanted to shout out that. Speaking of the character, who is Sunshine Honeybee? Personally, they are really the closest to normally sparkle face. I would almost say that Sunshine is the more developed version of the same idea, which is uh, being someone who doesn't fit the idea that others had for them. The name of uh, normally was a wordplay of parents wanting to see their child paradoxically as normal and special at the same time while really only formally committing to the latter. Sunshine was my pick for an overly joyful name, and the full title of this piece is The Millionth Mandatory Amusement Assignment of Sunshine Honeybee. Someone who has uh, given the most overly cheerful name and was always expected to live up to that name as a perfect individual without a single question and in the process suffered a great deal of self-hatred because of seeing the inability to meet those expectations as their own fault. Physical manifestations of these are the discolored skin and the black somewhat greasy looking hair that is hanging in the face resembling some sort of evil and outsider character instead of being the bright and sunny sunshine or the cute and hive-minded honeybee. And being someone who isn't conforming to the ideal person they were imagined to be doesn't end there. Obviously being part of this series they automatically fall under the non-binary umbrella along with being bisexual which starts to operate in a more complex way once you add people outside of the binary system to the mix, further complicating Sunshine's journey towards discovering themselves. 
which dungeon should we go on first? Uh, let's go with the bisexual one, yep. Now if you want to see some really cool videos about being bisexual and non-binary, I recommend Verity Richie's channel, which is titled in a really sus way. But at this point I feel most of us already see being bi as possibly the most misunderstood and misrepresented label of them all, possibly, that many people just simply don't take seriously enough or continuously question its validity. I know, because I recognize intrusive thoughts in myself that were the results of internalized biphobia when I heard people calling themselves bi and uh, I had uh, immediately thinking things like, yeah, that's not really a serious thing. Everyone just calling themselves bi nowadays, it's so basic. They are just essentially half a step away from being heteronormies. That's basically the 21st century's version of calling yourself straight. And you know, two seconds later I realized how messed up those are and I realized that the reason why I immediately think of those things is because of internalized biphobia, which is something that unfortunately I know I am aware about and still cannot fully escape. But at the same time, I am completely aware that these are not actually my own authentic thoughts and they don't represent how I feel about bisexual people. Not at all. And I feel that there is a really special kind of pain in not being taken seriously. If someone acknowledges you and hates you for it, that might not even hurt that much in many cases. And it is something that can sure serve as a catalyst for not taking yourself and your own feelings seriously. Mm, talking about your own feelings that people don't understand and yep, depression and mental illness. Surprisingly something that I don't have a history with, though many people would most definitely argue with that statement. The darker aesthetics of the character and the entire scene along with a really dull and definitely not happy expression were my way of showing the real nature of the character, but as a late addition I put some light beams subtly coming from the side and lighting up the character, not much and not fully being exposed to them but bright enough to give you a glimpse of happiness. Extra addition to the heart medal was a little shiny spot on it, mirroring the entire face with being split in the middle, held together by little bits, but still shining in that little amount of light. That part with being split in half, one side being darker is also a classic way of showing something like that, but it also bleeds into the idea of body dysmorphia, and my idea was that sunshine was uh, uniquely not affected by gender dysphoria, which is something different, they were comfortable being androgynous, marked by the hairstyle, possibly marked by the combination of male and female parts in their body that this picture just isn't showing, but still affected by the non-gendered parts in a negative way. Discolored uh, and dead looking skin and the huge scars, even the purple irises, they can look endlessly beautiful on a character and give their owner a polar opposite experience when looking into a mirror. But on the flip side, eventually getting to the point of liking them for the way they are sounds like the first step towards having a positive body image. There are two things that I only realized while writing this script. Having the piercing in the lower lips, the painting on the lips to one color, and the necklace are little signs of someone slowly learning to care for their body by decorating it. And the other is that they are not that visible, but I added three vertical scars, two on the face and one on the neck, that can be read as representations of self-harm. Given the fact that uh, one of them, the one on the neck, looks way too consistent, making it obvious it was made after the body was pieced together and not before. And you know, it can also be seen as a sign of abuse or an attack. I still feel that um, given the fact that this series is dealing about the relationship with someone and their body, these read much better if we consider them to be caused by self-harm. And this last one was actually an oversight from my part. I would have wanted to make the scars appear differently on the different parts of the bodies as of the different original bodies being marked by different scars and then when they are combined there would be uncontinuous scars on the face, but I then decided to build it into the piece instead of fixing it. That one single tear on the cheek can be quite symbolic as well. For me that shows a piece of relief that uh, is being found beyond the year 
years of repressed emotions. And if there's anything I wanted this piece to focus on was the feeling of that relief and uh, a little ray of happiness. Sunshine finding the thing they were named after even if not in the way it was expected of them. And with that we arrive to the end of the second piece out of the three. The third one will most definitely slip into July the way I'm standing with the editing. Yep, that part of the script didn't age well either. <laughs> I'm a little sad because uh, the third one from the series had something extra and unique in them, but not, qu not quite in the physical experience, so except that one to have something that ties the whole series together. The series that will be four pieces long after I finish that one. And I already have the idea for the fifth one, which is going to be a vampire OC whose extra trait is going to be chronic illness, but that is going to be a project for the future. Yeah, I actually like started that project already by the time I'm recording this script. I should have really looked into it and maybe rewrite a few parts, you know, next time. <laughs> but for today, I thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day, create something, even if it involves making something that most people just won't understand because making it for everyone else is just going to make it that much more valuable. But most importantly, have fun while doing that, or at least do it if you are feeling better as a result. Farewell.